Hello everybody, welcome back to the Final Fantasy VIII walkthrough. Uh, we... This is gonna be part two, and uh, we've got a little field trip here to the next town, which I completely forget the name. I'm guessing it's Balam, um, because I think the, the place that we start at is Balam Garden. So it follows that the main, or this next town would be on Balam. That's my guess anyway. Um, but anyways, all right, so I'm going to head out here. If you actually, if you stay on the road, you won't be attacked or you won't get into random encounters like this. But, um, yeah, I did, I actually kind of went off the, went off the road here to try to get into some fights here and get uh, some magic drawn. Um, hopefully I don't spend too much time dra just drawing magic. I may have, though, so I may have to make a little... Uh, cut here, but um, <clears throat> this is essentially the basis of the draw system. Um, you'll just generally want to have that draw command. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I like to have it on everybody at all times. Uh, just because you kind of never know um, where you're going to run into a monster that's got like a magic spell that you want to get. Um, so that's kind of the big reason uh, why I always have that draw command. Uh, I also, if you notice there, I've got the magic and item. Um, <clears throat> and for kind of similar reasons, I just like to have those. I don't really typically use the actual guardian force command that much. Uh, every once in a while I do, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just, there's something about that that I didn't really like that much. So yeah. I don't know, well, I guess we'll leave it at that. Um, use it if you, uh, if you wish. I, uh, I tend to, tend to not. Um, so there, if you noticed at the end of combat, we had, I think that was regular character experience and then AP. So, um, the way you learn new abilities with your guardian forces is by amassing AP. And, um, so that, that's a, a little bit of a different... Well, here's a little tutorial here on the trigger. Um, uh, Squall can land uh, like automatic critical hits if you use the trigger at the right time. Which I don't know if we'll actually end up seeing here or not. Hopefully. Hopefully I will do that. But, um, yeah. Anyways, okay, so AP. There we go, pull the trigger there. There we go, so that was a crit. If you notice there, it does a little slash animation and then a, like a little bit of an explosion too. Uh, you'll get the feel for the timing. It's actually super easy. But um, no, none of the other characters have that, so you don't have to worry about trying to hit R1 um, for like, you know, Quistis when she's about to connect with her whip. That it doesn't do any, it's not going to do you any good. Um, so as far as physical attacks, I would argue that um, Squall probably has the best just because um, he's the only character that stays in your party that can constantly make use of that. Um, everybody else has got uh, just like random criticals, I guess I'd say. But here's the first sound. Um, so anyways, like I was saying, the, the AP is what uh, helps your Guardian Forces learn new abilities. I mentioned those in the previous video. Um, like Shiva can learn, you know, Strength Junction. Um, and then like, you know, Ice magic refinement or whatever i i forget the the names of the different abilities that the the guardian forces can use but um which rental places are good or bad oh, i don't really care okay so um here's the car rental place i barely ever rent cars if if ever i just i don't really feel like it's that useful it's kind of nice though i guess if you need to get around somewhere and you don't want to be attacked but, um, yeah, um, so I'm not really sure why I stopped into Balam, to be honest. I don't know that there's, oh, yeah, there is actually something good here. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to play uh, cards a lot, I actually do recommend coming here as soon as you can. Uh, reason being, the, there's an NPC here called the Queen of Cards, and she is able to switch the rules. And uh, actually, I would say it's probably not a bad idea to save. Actually, there's an inn somewhere in here. Uh, this is Zell's house. Zell is one of the characters that you'll get um, a little bit later. Actually, we did meet Zell there in the first episode. He was the 
the one that was running in the in the cafeteria there, so it sounded like he was gonna get busted by Cypher and his goon squad. Um, <clears throat> in the corner of this room, there's a says there's a Timber Maniacs uh, magazine, but then it says not, so I assume that means that it's not actually one. I don't know, kind of goofy. I don't really know why they put it there. Maybe to tease you, I guess. All right, so here's a thunder draw point. I guess I'm gonna draw on Squall. Um, I don't think I remembered in the first episode there, but if I remember correctly, the um, the amount of spells that you get from a draw point is based off of your magic stat, if I remember correctly. So uh, the higher your magic stat, the more um, copies of um, you know that spell you should be able to get. So here is the um, here's the queen. Uh, so here she was wanting to pass on a rule, and I didn't want her to do that, so I just pressed no. Um, I gotta be honest, so there's a bunch of stuff to the Queen of Cards that I don't entirely remember. So, um, hopefully I'll, yeah, I don't know, I feel like I should look that up again, but, um, I do remember, though, okay, so one of the things that you'll want to do is... As I was saying earlier, you want to actually save your game beforehand before you kind of start monkeying around with her rules. And uh, one of the rules that I like to pass on is all. And uh, the reason being is that way when you actually win a card game, you get to um, get to uh, take all of the cards that the other player has. So that rule right there was diff. Um, so that's kind of a goofy rule. I don't really like that one that much. It, uh, what, you, what happens is you end up subtracting, um, the total number of cards that you had face up versus their, their cards. And there's the trade rule one, which we've already got, so we don't need to have that one. But yeah, diff is weird. So like, if you win seven cards to three, uh, the difference is four, so then you get to take four of their cards. Um, you know, so the, the more you win by, the more cards you'll get, and which makes sense, but um, I just don't like it because the trade rule all is just so much better. Like, it just, you get all of their cards automatically every time you win it. It's, it's a slam dunk, so. So that's the trading rule. Um, there are other rules, though, <clears throat> like same. Same is another rule that I don't like. Um... And then direct. Direct is actually another another one. Actually, direct was the actually the one I was thinking of, where um, if you flip over, like we'll just say for instance, if you flip over one of their cards, um, when the when it ends and you've won, then you get those cards that you've managed to flip over. So that's another one of those trading rules. It's just not good um, because then actually if you lose, um, they can they can take the cards that they flipped over so i don't know again i'm i'm a little rusty on these different rules but uh, i just i think all is the best and i and so actually so what i'm doing here i guess i guess i should probably explain that a little bit is i keep um well it looks like i actually it almost looks like i froze up or something that's weird um but uh yeah so what i'm doing here is uh challenging her and then seeing if I like the rule, and if I like the rule, I'll play her, but if I don't like the rule, I, uh, I cancel it. Oh, that is so weird. It looks like my game froze up. It didn't, though. It's, I guess I'm just standing around. That's really weird. I shouldn't say it's really weird because I do that crap all the time. I get distracted or I have to go to the bathroom or whatever, and I don't pause my, my game. I just kind of let it run. Which whatever I think we're uh, we're about to play another game here, or at least attempt it. Um, so I don't know. It's really weird for me to, or it's it's weird to see me not save beforehand because that's generally what I what I do when I interact with the Queen of Cards. Now, I did win. I think I won some cards earlier to hopefully make this a little bit easier because that's the other problem. You have to play her and beat her, and. Uh, <laughs> 
and that 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 way you can get this rule that you want to spread around. Um, I think if you lose to her, I don't know that it'll that you can spread the rule. So that's a problem. So if you're just trying to beat her with the uh, the initial cards that you get, it's probably not a a good way to go. Probably gonna end up losing and just you know thus wasting a bunch of time. But we'll see here. I'm not sure if, uh, actually I should probably check and see that I actually did that. And we probably have seen enough of her in not giving me the rule I want. So I think I'll, I'll make a little cut here. Oh, there it is. Right, of course, right when I was going to make a cut. Okay, so then I didn't play her. That doesn't make sense. I should have played her right there. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. I guess I'm going to go play this guy and see if he or if she passed the rule to him. Yeah, play the game. Come on, let's go, buddy. You don't have all day. These people want to watch this, uh, this walkthrough. Oh, what? He's got the direct rule. That's not right. That's in all right. Let's check again. Sometimes, sometimes it's goofy, too, and they'll, like, swap up whatever rule they're, they, they want to play with. I don't know, this game's got some really goofy stuff with with um, the random number generator. I did look up, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, it's, it's not a true random number generator because you can alter it. Which, I, I, maybe I shouldn't even say that. Maybe I'm confusing myself with the, the RNG business. I don't know that there is a true RNG in any game. But anyways, and, and who knows, I might be just talking crazy nonsense, but this game, however, for sure, you can alter it, which is, it's pretty crazy that people even figured that out. I think it's, I mean, it's super cool that people spent time to, to work that out, but this is kind of weird, though, that um, the all rule didn't spread. I, I guess if I, if I remember, I, I thought that you had to actually play her and win. Uh, for the rule to be spread around, but that, I don't know if that's actually the case. Here, I'm just obviously talking to this guy, and we're going to prove me either wrong or right here in a minute. I bought a game of cards. Yes. Yes, I do want to play. And there is a cut here in my video, so... I must have figured something out one way or the other. Shortly. But yeah, this is the, the probably, I would argue, the lame point of the game because just dealing with the um, the Queen of Cards in general is super annoying. It's the probably one thing that I dislike the most about this game. Um, you know, and just how she decides to, to play and the just altering of the rules. There it is! Okay, so I was right there. Uh, that's apparently all I needed to do was... Um, to talk to her, get her to show the all rule, and then quit, and then go and talk to this other guy until he'll 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 be willing to play with the all rule. And I think at that point, it's a good idea to save. Um, God, this is so weird. I feel like the game. It looks like the game freezes because nobody moves around. Like the NPCs aren't doing anything on the screen, but it's fine. Um, anyway, so here I've got uh, a little bit of money. I don't know if I actually ended up buying anything. Generally, I don't. I don't find items all that useful. Maybe maybe at the beginning, potions are kind of useful, but uh, really, I do the most, of, or I, I do the majority of my healing and, and stuff with magic. You know, I just draw, draw from enemies, um, store the magic, and then use said magic. Um, so, all right, we're going to head around here. I'm not sure what I'm planning on doing. There isn't much else to do in this. I think there's um, a magazine or something maybe in the, the inn here. But I don't remember. That might be later. might be later on that we can get that. I guess we'll see. Um, oh, no, I see it there on the back table. There it is. Timber Maniacs. All right, you finished reading it. Cool. Um, I don't remember what the Timber Man Maniacs magazines do anymore. I really don't. 
I know they've got some sort of significance. I just don't remember what they are. All right. So we're on our way back out. Uh, I don't know really why I didn't save my game again. That seems weird. Apparently I was confident enough uh, to not feel like I needed to. Uh, that's about it for Balm, though. That was really the only reason why I came here was to um, to swap up the rules because I had planned on doing a bunch of uh, card playing, and so that's what we'll end up doing here uh, for the rest of this. And I think here's a cut. I just I didn't even bother running back to Balm Garden or taking the footage of me running back. Yeah, there we go. So um, here we're back at the whatever the board thing was called. I forget. But uh, we're going to play some cards here. And uh, you'll see me there. He so here, if you notice there, I've got the all. Uh, and then the open rule. So I uh, guess I should probably talk about that a little bit. The open rule means that um, your cards are shown face up. Which I feel like is... I think that's the best one. Because uh, I think the other rules here, you play with your card... Or the enemy player will play with their cards face down and... That's just a little more annoying because you're not really sure, you know, at all times what cards they've got left. Unless, I guess, you're really paying attention or have a crazy good memory. Uh, which I don't, so I don't. <laughs> but uh, here I think I'm, at best, I'm going to manage a tie, if not a loss. This is probably going to be a loss, actually. I guess we'll see. I don't know how I'm going to be able to pull this off. Yeah, like, at best, I'm going to manage a tie here. Nope, that's a... Oh, that is a tie. Yeah, okay. Alright, so a draw is not the worst case scenario ever. Um, I forget what tier of cards this guy plays with, but this is where you're starting to get into the good stuff. Uh, his cards, anyway. And then I feel like... Um... Where am I going? Oh, that's weird. Okay. I guess I'm confused. Um, but yeah, you generally want to build up, you know, start with the lower cards, get a couple of the good lower cards, or I guess maybe you could you can aim high, but your chances of, go, uh, of winning games when you go too high are really not great. So, like, I would say don't go right to the cafeteria and play the guy in the back right away because he's going to destroy you. Um, unless you just get crazy lucky somehow, but um, I think I'm actually looking for the running kid. Yeah, here we go. All right, so this kid's got a rare card. He's got the Mog uh, card. I think I'm going to lose, though, here. Yeah, this is, I don't know. I'm, I'm really biting off more than I can choose here, or chew here. I really should have stuck to the other guy that's sitting down at the bench. Uh, this kid's cards aren't that bad. They're not that great, though, either. If you notice, he's got a... a Catter Chipler thingamajigger there on the top. And then I forget what his third card down is. That one's not very good either, but um, the rest of those are pretty strong. It's tough to beat a like a grat if you use that in the right spot. Um, it can be really good. Obviously it's got the seven on the top there. Um, so uh, with the base rules, and I'll go into the, the more in-depth rules a bit later, but um, with the, the base rules as, as it is, it's actually really easy to win uh, games. I'm, I'm guessing I lose this one pretty bad. I don't see myself. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to pull this off. Nope. So there's a loss. Uh, so at that point, I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to reset right now because this is basically all my cards. So, yeah, like I said, a bit off more than I could chew. I should have stuck to the guy on the bench. Yeah, so here I'm just... Oh, nope, not resetting yet. There it is. All right. Let's try this again. But, um, yeah, so as far as the, the card game actually goes, it's pretty easy. It's just, you know, the, the higher number beats the lower number, and you want to flip over as many cards as you can, and uh, that determines whether or not you win. Um, now that we've obviously uh, changed the rule to all, 
it spread to the Balam, uh, all over the Balam region. Um, every once in a while, I did notice that the rule will switch back to one. Um, at that point, I just don't play, and then I keep talking to whoever, which, by the way, when you want to play a card, you press the square button. <laughs> Should have said that a long time ago, as opposed to just the whatever the, is it the X button, I think, is what talks to people regularly. But, um, yeah. All right, let's see if we can win, win a game here. I feel like once you win one of these uh, rounds against uh, one of these guys that has kind of some of the better cards, you're, it's pretty easy to get set up really well, and then you just start steamrolling, especially if you know what you're doing. Um, a little bit of the game. There's a little bit of a learning curve. I feel like once you get it down, I mean, and it's not even so much that. It's just once you get a, a good collection of, of powerful cards, it's really easy to just keep winning and winning and winning. So, um, But yeah, so anyways, like I was saying, um, the, the rule there uh, will every once in a while swap back to one, uh, which is a little annoying, but... Um, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. You can get, generally, uh, you can get the, the people to swap the rule back pretty quickly. I would say it's a good idea to use the fungar on the bottom right-hand corner at this point. Um, because there's uh, only... Yeah, the fungar on the bottom corner would be okay. Yeah, that'll be a good move. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so the dude did not do what I thought. Now we're kind of bone though. Oh no, we're gonna win. This should be a win. I don't think we can lose at this point. No, we're good. All right, so that's a win, and we'll get a lot of really good cards here. Um, the what's this one? What's this one come up here? Oh, I missed the name of it. <laughs> Too fast. But yeah, that's a that's a pretty good. We'll have a pretty strong hand now for future um, games. And that's generally what I'll do. So then after I win something good like that, I'll uh, save my game. Alright, so there I saved and actually made a little cut. And then I want to play the the kid again. Uh, at a certain point here, I'm going to win his Mog card. But I don't know if this is the, the game or not. I guess we'll see. Um, okay. No, this is not the one yet. Uh, so here's another good um, this is another good hand. If I can win a couple more of these cards, I'll have a pretty pretty decent hand. The uh, whatever his one there, not the grat, but the next one down with the egg symbol. I think it's like the earth symbol in the top corner. That's a really good card. The festito Callan or whatever. And I think there's actually two of them. Yeah, because that, that other one is a, a Festido Callan or whatever thing, too. Uh, my card, the blue one, or the, the fish-looking thing. Oh, this should be a win. Yep, there we go, okay. Yeah, Festido Callan. Uh, and then that other one was really good, too. I forget the name of that last card. But uh, generally, from this point on... Uh, now, again, I'm going to... Probably run over here and save. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, so we're pretty set up, though. Um, it should be really easy to to uh, get some really good cards coming up here. Um, am I gonna play this guy? Okay, I guess so. Um, yeah. So uh, at this point, I would say you're going to want to shoot for. Um, just a strong, a good strong hand. Once you feel like you got a, a pretty decent hand, then I would play the kid that's running around that I actually just wiped the floor with there twice. And, um, uh, get his Mog card. The Mog card is really good. It's one of the stronger cards, or strongest cards. Definitely the strongest at this point in the game. Other than there is actually one more card. I think that's a little bit stronger. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to go for that one in this. I don't think so, actually. Yeah, we're, we're coming right up on the end of this video, so I don't think I got the other good card. Anyways, it's the Quistus card. And uh, that's held by the, the guy in the cafeteria. So I'm betting that'll be towards the beginning of the next video. I think that's when I'll 
uh, try to get that one. Kind of wish I would have stuck that on the end of this video instead. It would probably be a little, or make a little bit more sense. Um, because at that point, once you get, once you get the Quistus card, you're, it's hard to lose. Same with, oh, I should say the, the paired up Quistus with Mog. It'll be hard to lose for, uh, for a long time. All right, what are we doing here? Doing so great. Um, so if you notice there, so he's got like, like in this situation, he's got the seven, um, on, on the top. This is not a good idea. Don't go there, dude. It's going to be way too easy to beat. Ah, uh, that's crazy. Okay. Oh, weird. Maybe that just wasn't a winning hand, and I decided it wasn't a winning hand. Anyways. All right. Okay, so here's the kid. Here's where we're going to... Uh, I think this is where we're going to win the Mog card. Yeah, I grabbed some... Yeah, I, I, so if you notice here, there's a little cut, and I have uh, some more cards... Which I don't really know where they came from, but yeah, this is a really strong hand. Holy crap. Yep, so this is my bottom right defender. Got the bottom left defender there. There we go, that's a good start. And then my Abyss Worm. Yep, that'll go down there. And what else we have? Boom, this is a win. Boom. Alright, that's that. That's Mog. All right, so the next video should be uh, hopefully winning some more cards. We'll go chat with the guy in the um, uh, the cafeteria. But uh, as always, hope this guide was helpful, and I uh, hope you join me for more. Thanks for watching.